Welcome back everyone. In our last video, we talked about establishing a, a baseline for a new base. We were able to get the base to resist as well as to move. In this video, we want to talk about getting a new base to move faster. So I brought out my Reggie Bush figure to race against this new base. The Reggie Bush figure has been set back five yards, giving the new base a five yard head start. Let's see what happens. As you can see, the Reggie Bush figure has basically burnt this new base. So we got some more work to do. We're going to talk about how to get this newer base to move faster to keep up with the Reggie Bush figure or to possibly beat it. Before I move on, there's some things that I want to talk about in regards to base movement. First, the base itself. The motors or transformers that are mounted on the underside of the board and the surface that the base rides on. This particular board it has three motors or three transformers mounted on the underside of the board. I have one at the 50, one at the 15 yard line on each end. The surface of this board is made of vinyl. Traditional electric football boards are made of aluminum. Metal allows the vibration of the board to resonate better. You have less absorption of vibration on your on a metal board than you would on a vinyl board. This particular board, as I said before, is a vinyl surface. That vinyl is mounted on a tile. And the frame of the board is made of pine. The playing surface is 35 inches in length from end zone to end zone and 21 and a half inches in width from sideline to sideline. So the size of the board, the materials that were used to build this board, all play a part in how the vibration resonates across the board. The vibration on this board is rather moderate because the materials used absorb some of that vibration. So if I were to put these two figures on a traditional electric football board, they both would run a lot faster because they are running on metal and they are running on a smaller field. There's some custom boards in the hobby that have as many as 10 transformers mounted on the underside of their boards, thereby creating more vibration and reducing the amount of vibration that is absorbed. We're now ready to talk about why this base on the right lost the race against the Reggie Bush figure. The base on the left, although it looks the same as the base on the right, it has flaws that the base on the right doesn't have. And that flaw or flaws are excessive plastic protruding from the very tips of these prongs. If you look closely, the camera unfortunately can't pick up that flaw. But if you look at the prongs itself, you can see how they're kind of mangled. At the tips of those prongs, it has excessive plastic protruding from it. And that excessive plastic is called flash. On this base, the base on the right, this is our base that we're working with. It has a small amount of flash on the very tips of these prongs. And that flash is causing the base to drag. Although the base runs decent, it's being slowed down by the flash that's on the very tip of these prongs. So we're going to move into 
removing that flash from those tips. I have in my hand a cigarette lighter and the base. Notice how I am holding the base using my needle nose pliers. I have the base by the very tips of the prongs. I'm using the pliers as a heat sink to protect the outside shell of the base as well as the prongs that are in this area of the pliers. This aspect of tweaking is not for children. This is serious business because fire and plastic do not mix. Basically, basically what I want to do, I'm not going to flash this lighter here in this video because I have to be in a particular stance so I can get the right touch on this base. I want to flash the lighter and quickly move the base in and out. In and out. Thereby removing that flash that we talked about earlier. So in the next segment, I'm going to show you the results of my flashing technique. Again, this is not child's play. Children are not to be using a lighter for anything. This is for adults only. Okay, now I'm done flashing the tips of these prongs. This is the base that we are monitoring. This is the base that we're testing out in our tweak process. This base on the left, it had an extreme amount of flash on these tips right here. So while I was at it, I flashed these as well using my cigarette lighter. The tweak process is more or less a trial and error type of process. Um, as you develop a base, you may fix one problem and cause another. For example, I flash these prongs to achieve more speed. I may have affected the resistance that we once had earlier. So I have to also do another resistance test along with a sprint test with this base right here. So I have my Reggie Bush figure set up and ready to run against this newly tweaked base. Also in the tweak process, you have to know when to stop tweaking a base. Because you can tweak a base to such a point that you could render it useless. For example, in the flash process where we actually use fire to melt away excess plastic from these prongs, if you're too if you're overzealous about that, you could potentially melt your base and ruin it. So now, after we do this speed test against Reggie Bush and maybe against uh, some other figures, we're going to perhaps look at maybe um, doing some other things to uh, achieve the maximum effect from this base. While I am testing the base in a sprint and resistance test, I have my pliers on this coffee mug warmer or candle warmer. I'm getting those ready to finalize the base when I'm satisfied of its overall performance. Before I go, before I come to these pliers, I may pass the base over this sheet of sandpaper. Um, this is a fine grade paper. It's a uh, 180 uh, grade paper. You don't want to use a very rough paper. You just want to use the finest grade you can find. Um, I intend to push the base across this uh, pad, across this uh, sandpaper once or twice, and you want to push the base in the direction that it goes in. You don't want to go backwards because then you'll move the prongs from sweeping one direction to another. So you want to go in the direction the base is running in. We're now ready to run our second sprint test, but this time we've given Reggie Bush the five-yard head start. Let's see what happens.
beautiful run. Beautiful run. Although Reggie did beat him in the 100, I still like what this base has given me so far. Now we want to test for resistance a second time. Now that we've tweaked our base for speed, we flash the tips of the prongs. We want to see if we've if we've lost anything. So I brought back the rail Reavers. Let's see what happens. Nice. The receiver held his ground. In fact, he gained a couple of yards in the pushing match. Remember the traditional boards that I talked about earlier? Well, as you can see, here's the end zone of my custom board. And the aluminum board is able to fit inside this custom board stadium. So this model board you see here, this is the uh, a Tudor Model 500 True Action Electric Football Board. And this board is made of aluminum. It has one transformer on it. And I'm going to show you how fast men, how fast these figures can move on this board. Observe. It's quick, isn't it? And the base you just saw there, the one I just finished tweaking, is now in the end zone. Remember the pliers that I talked about earlier while they were sitting on the candle warmer? Well, I've used these pliers on this base. And when you use these pliers, you want to be you want to make sure that the pliers aren't too hot because they could potentially warp or melt the prongs on your base. So if you have an old base that you don't want anymore, or maybe a base that probably has gotten damaged, you can use that base to test the temperature of your uh your your warmed pliers. Uh when you take a base from hot to cold using these pliers or using your your lighter during the flash process, that change in temperature can potentially affect the performance of your base. So I'm going to do a resistance test to, to make sure that I haven't lost any resistance. And I'm going to do another sprint test to make sure I haven't lost any speed. Let's see what happens. It looks as if we've gained some resistance here. I've allowed this base to sit for a while to cool. We're set to run another run test. Let's see what happens. Okay. Just based on that short run there we can see that this base has lost speed. So the way it's looking, this base probably won't play wide receiver for me. I may have to move it to cornerback. Although I can push the envelope on this base because there's more that I can do to it to perhaps try and get it faster. But doing that, I may lose something else. So I'm going to stop here with this base. I'm going to move on to another base and see what I can get from it. But right now, because of its resistance and its consistent movement, I think it's best at corner. I'm Mo Rob. Thanks for watching.